YouTube, Josh the Window Cleaner here. And today I'm gonna to be teaching my wife a little bit about how to use the water fed pole and uh, some things that we do in, this, in that sense. And uh, so she's gonna be holding the camera some. Sometimes you'll be on my head, but I'll mainly be talking to her and hopefully y'all can learn from um, what I'm teaching her today. So we'll see y'all in just a second. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change up my filter. Um, my TDS monitor is reading above 10. Normally I like to change it out at 10. So I'm gonna show you a little trick that I've learned uh, about my little DI tank. It'll save you money on resin because this is what, over time when you grow your business, you'll start spending a lot of money on resin. And uh, right now I'm spending about $300 a month on it. That's why I just upgraded to the X2. But I'm waiting on some new filters and stuff. I got a defective one and I got mine, so I'm still waiting on uh, the stuff. But then I'll be able to use that and I won't have to use so much resin. But for now we're using this DI tank. We're using the Unger two bag system. And so I've learned a little trick to it. And you can also find this on my review for the DI uh, Unger tank. You can find this in my review, the same little trick. So. All right, so the first thing you want to do, and this is what I do, I turn the water on, make sure my water's pumping through, make sure it's coming out here, and I'll turn my TDS monitor on, and uh, as you can see right now, it's, it's pumping uh, five, six, eight, starting to go up to, to nine, it was up to like 12, 13, there it goes 11, so once it gets to that, it's time to change the filter. So I go ahead and cut the water off. There's gonna be a lot of water in there. Um, but this way it has a really good flow so you can check your TDS monitor a lot better than when the hose is plugged up in it. Then you gotta, you know, wait for it to come out the end and all that to make sure that your flow's going. So that's why I do it without the hose on top. So just on this tank, this is how this works. You just push this little lever down right here, push down on it and spin to the left. And then it's gonna come off gonna be full of water okay what you want to do is this filter on top is not gonna be as dirty as the filter on the bottom and this is just my theory because when the water pumps through here it makes this one really really dirty in my opinion so what I do is I take this one out that one goes in the garbage I'll go ahead and dump the rest of the water out Okay, and I'll grab the new one. And this, they, they have like a line on them if you get the Unger uh, resin bags. And so what I like to do is I just kind of like to put it on the top and then push it in. And I try to keep it, um, keep that line as straight as possible. It just slides in there better. And then once you have it in there, then take your fist and push on it like this all the way around. And that makes sure that when you put the other bag on top, it fits in there a little bit easier because this bag is going to be wet. So, actually, hold on, I did that wrong. So, you want to put the new one on top. This is the one that was on top. So, you want that one to go in first because it's already a little bit dirty. That's right. Sorry, I did that wrong. Alright, so once you put, put that one back in there, and that was the DI bag that was on top, you push that in there, and then you put the new one on top. That way, next time, you can uh, you just pull this bag out and put it on the bottom next time. So, in my opinion, by the time that this water runs through this first filter, it's already filtrated out enough to where it's not going to make this as dirty. So, that's just my theory, and it's been working for us. We save a lot of money. I mean, I was spending like $500 a month on resin, and now we're spending $300 a month on resin because we're just swapping out one bag, and it still lasts the same amount of time. So. Alright, so once you have that in there, I'm going to push down on it. So I always put my feet right here, push down, and then spin. And then this will lock back into place. Now you're ready to go. So now, this is trash. Carry that with me. Now when we turn it on, it'll take a minute to fill up because now it's pushing through all those filters again and that water's not full. So as soon as the water starts shooting out here, it should be any minute, 
as soon as that wire starts shooting out of there, you just turn the TDS monitor on. And I normally like to count to 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Turn it on. And it's at zero. So I'm gonna bring it over here and show that it's at zero. And as long as you change the filter out whenever your TDS monitor reads 10 or above, um, you should be good. I always change that right before it gets to 10 or, or at 10. And uh, you won't have any problems with it being pure water. So that's how I change out the resin bag on my DI uh, tank. This tank has been awesome. It has plenty of pressure. You can have two poles going. Um, I've loved it so far. It has been great. I've had it for three years. So I definitely can say that I've had some really good use out of this. But this is just my tip and my trick on how to change out the filter and how to make it last a lot longer and it'll save you a lot of money in the long run. So I hope y'all enjoyed. Um, that's going to be it for this video. You can check out our other video and you can see the windows that we're going to be doing. I'm going to be teaching my wife how to use the water fit pole today. So, All right, so you want to make sure that when you go to a job, you at least have one hose that has 150 feet. I also have um, four hoses that are 50 feet, just in case I need extra extensions. But you don't want to be hauling around a big tank. And so it's best to just have a lot of hose, in my opinion. Um, so we're gonna hook up the 150 feet to another 100 feet, and we should be able to get around the whole house uh, without moving the tank. So you wanna make sure to have that. Um, most people have it on a reel, which is a lot easier, but I just ravel it up every time, and then we put it in our bucket. But um, that's what you wanna make sure you have enough hose so you're not lugging around that big, huge tank. All right, the first thing I want to do is hook my water line up to the top of my tank. This is where my pure water is going to come through. And then, so this is on this side. I normally try to keep it on one side so I can just flip it over. And then I should be able to run my hose pretty easily. I normally keep, I normally keep, um, a hose in my water fed pole that's about as long as the ho as the water fed pole can go. So I have the uh, the zero M9 that goes up about 21 feet. We're only doing the first floor today. Um, she wants to do the upstairs once a year and the downstairs every six months because she's looking at it a lot. So we're just going to use this pole today. Um, it's been a really good pole for solar panel cleaning, but this is what I'm going to use. So you just want to make sure you have enough hose. You know, it's about 20, 21 feet, maybe a little bit more. Um, that way it's really easy when you're done. You just disconnect it, ravel it up, and you can keep that all together. That way you're not having to keep on taking it out, putting it back in. It just saves you a lot of time. Uh, so we're going to run the 150 feet with this probably like 25 feet. And that should be uh, good enough to walk around this house. It's not that big. So we will start cleaning some windows now. So the first thing you want to do is uh, when your water's coming all the way through, I always pinch it like this. There's uh, valves, there's so many other options, but I'm just used to pinching it right now. So I'm just going to pinch it and then that shuts the water off. And as soon as I release it, the water comes out. And the first thing you want to do is just wash down the frames really good. They're going to be the dirtiest. So frames. Okay. And then I like to give it a good rinse on all the frames to get all that dirt off. Okay. And then you can clean the glass. I just like to scrub it down with the brush first. And you want to start from top to bottom, just like you would with traditional window cleaning. Give it an okay rinse. Okay. And this just gets all the dirt off. Uh, you're preparing it to be able to rinse real good. And there'd be nothing on the, on the glass. Right. Give it a good rinse. Now I'm going to pinch my hose. And uh, I'm going to scrub over the windows with the bronze pool pad. This will get any kind of bugs 
or anything off of the glass. It won't get paint. It won't get urethane or stickers or anything like that. It just basically is a good scrubber for bugs and um, bird poop, things like that. That's on the window. It works really good for. And after you scrub it all down real good, flip it over, release it, and then wash it one more time. But just try to get the glass because the frame should already be clean by now. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to give this a really good rinse. And that rinse just lifts everything off and lets it run down away from the window so that it has a spot free shine. So if you uh, do the bottom part of this glass right away, make sure you rinse off that real good, that frame. These are French paints. And then you just want to massage the glass again on the bottom. Okay, now just give it a good rinse again. Alright. And then just one final rinse on the bottom frame to get all, any kind of dirt off. Make sure there's nothing dripping down. You don't want dirt lines running down their house. Um, especially if it's white like this. You just want to make sure you clean up your mess. And I know some people are like, you're wasting water. Well, I just want to do a good job, so. I don't want to have two hoses hooked up and all that. All right, and then I'll pinch my hose. And a lot of times I can put it in the bottom. So, towards the bottom, it has like a little hole. And you can just pinch it and shove it in that hole. And then that normally will stop the water from, from going and then you can walk around. Normally I will, I will hold my hose like this when I walk around. That way it doesn't just get jerked out and start squirting water because then you really are wasting water. And you don't want to do that, especially when you spend a lot of money on uh, resin. So that's how you clean a window with a water pole, pole. Uh, just a downstairs one on, on a French paint. So hope y'all enjoyed. See y'all in the next video.